Welcome back once more Venice Film Festival fans. Thank you for clicking on my review for Koji Fukada's Love Life. The first and sadly only Eastern cinema film I've been able to catch here at Venice, where we follow the story of Taiko and her husband Jiro, who live a peaceful existence with her young son Keita. But when a tragic accident brings the boy's long-lost father Park back into her life, Taiko throws herself into helping the deaf homeless man in order to cope with her grief. Now, I went as blind as one can go into a film when it comes to love life. Not only have I never seen any of Koji Fukada's previous works, but this was a very last minute booking. So I didn't even know what it was about going in, which created for an emotional, but also soothing experience. There's a sereneness to Koji Fukada's storytelling sensibilities and judging from love life, he is a very observant filmmaker where he leaves us at a distance to simply observe as characters go through the process of grieving in their own unique and individual ways, where we feel like a fly on the wall just observing as they attempt to return to normalcy, to get life back on track and return to the mundane. There's nothing extraordinary about this world, about these characters, but that's kind of what makes it unique. But before I dive any deeper into my thoughts on Koji Fukada's love life, I need to know your thoughts on it in the comments below. What is your favorite film from him? Because now I definitely want to see more. Did you catch it at Venice or anywhere else by the time you find this video? And if you're enjoying my Venice Film Festival coverage, if you're enjoying this review, or if you just love movies and TV, this is the place to be. So consider clicking that subscribe button and you won't miss any future conversations on your favorite movies and TV. To perhaps state the obvious, Love Life is a film that is not going to be for everyone. There's nothing flashy about this. There's no pomp and circumstance. It's just a film observing characters, their drama, and a ton of dialogue. This is a slow-moving, dialogue-heavy drama that just focuses and excels on performance. So naturally, this isn't going to be for everyone, particularly because people still have a ton of issues with watching subtitle films, which is a shame because the characters and the performances are the best aspect of this film. With the standout being Fumino Kimura, who plays Taiko, the mother of young Keita, in an effortlessly understated performance as a woman overcome by pain, grief, fracturing her marriage as her sense of being lost and without purpose brings her closer to someone who terribly hurt her in the past. And the performances overall are so naturalistic. Even though you have this emotional narrative that is contrasted on a visual level by the soothing and natural beauty of contemporary Japan, that the drama never feels like it's too much. The performances never feel overbearing. And that is perhaps to a fault on the film's regards, which was the biggest standout quality of this film for me. And that is that Koji Fukada's sensibilities as a storyteller leave us at an arm's length. He's an observer and wants us to be observers with him. He never goes in closer to judge the actions of these characters or the mistakes they make along the way in their process of griefs. He never judges. He simply observes and he wants us to sit as witnesses as well as we see these characters dealing in some wrong ways, some right ways, with their own grief. But the film itself never takes a side, it never takes a proper perspective, and that is maybe to a fault. The film is just very neutral, and overall, even though it has a serene quality to it, even though the visuals are gorgeous, even though the performances feel so natural and in the moment, I find myself wanting more from an emotional perspective, where the film feels like it moves through the motions and it takes the right steps, 
but it never explores any of these characters, the emotions they're going through, or the numbness that they even feel at points to a deeper level. The film never deepens the scope on these characters and their relationships. It never lets us in, always keeping us at an arm's length. And while that is a clear, purposeful choice by director Koji Fukada, the numbness that these characters go through at points expressing anything but emotion just didn't complement the narrative whatsoever. In big emotional moments where these characters are having big confessions or big monologues, big moments for performance, a lot of times we're left with a wide shot. A lot of times it's from the back of characters. We're never allowed to close in, to feel intimate with them, even on a visual standpoint. And I always wanted more because the potential was always there. The narrative is emotionally potent. The characterizations are specific and can be powerful, but the direction just never allows the script to shine. Instead of complimenting it, it almost feels like it numbs it down. And while I admire Koji Fukada bringing such naturalistic sensibilities to a drama about grief, not trying to overbear it with a drama, not trying so hard to pull at your heartstrings, it's a powerful concept, but the execution impedes it from truly being profound. Love Life is a tender depiction of the process of grieving, with humanistic storytelling and performances carrying it in compelling enough ways. But directorial choices ultimately numb the emotional potency of such a harrowing premise. I'm giving Love Life a C. But that's just my take on Koji Fukada's Love Life from the Venice Film Festival. What do you think about it? What is your favorite Koji Fukada film? Thank you so much for watching and for keeping up with the Venice Film Festival coverage. Thanks to my channel members for always supporting the channel. And I'll be back very soon. So until the next one, love each other and love the movies.